Hello, this is a video for the Spearman's Row Test, sometimes known as the Spearman's Rank Test. Um, I actually thought the Chi Squared one was the most difficult one, but like, I've just tried to do this one and I've just got it wrong. So this one is the most complicated one, it's got um, loads of steps to it. The Chi Squared one's quite a simple one to get your head around if you're just using formulas, but this one has got a lot of steps, so this one takes the longest. But it's kind of straightforward once you've had a go a few times at it. So the Spearman's Raw Spearman's rank is a parametric test, so in you know populations are, are generally not normally distributed, and it's looking for um, a relationship between the variables. So you know when you are doing correlational data, you would use a Spearman's raw or Spearman's rank to see how close those variables are related to each other. Does one kind of predict the other in a sense? Um, as one increases, does the other increase? As one decreases, does the other decrease? Or as one increases, does the other? I've said that already, but yeah, you get the picture. So, um, this test will tell you whether or not that's kind of a strong relationship or a weak relationship, um, or whether it's positive or whether it's negative. So, what you have to do is say you have here, we've got 15 students in a psychology undergraduate course at university. They've been asked how long they have a social media account for in months, and they've been asked to rate on a five point scale from one not at all to five, definitely their beliefs about whether they think social media is effective to connect with friends. So we're looking at the relationship between those two things. So we've got the 15 participants here and we've got you know, their data. Now, it says here that you need to have at least ordinal level data. These at the moment are kind of interval ratio data and we're going to turn them into ordinal data by ranking them. So this is why it's sometimes called Spearman's rank because you're going to rank the data before you actually like do the calculations. So, the first one we're going to do is the years with social media account. So this one here. So you take the data and you put it in order. So you put it from smallest to um, largest or largest to smallest. So I'm going to go smallest to largest. So if we kind of check them out, all the ones in. So then we want the twos. Now, obviously, if this is on paper, it would be a lot quicker. Um, because I'm on a computer, it's taking quite a long time. So that is it all ordered. Now what you need to do is rank it. So essentially the ranks are just kind of like 1 to um, 15 because there's 15 participants. But the only thing that you've got to do is if you've got scores that are the same, then they have to have the same rank. So what you do is you add these ranks together. So you do 1 plus 2 plus 3 and you divide by how many there are, so there's 3. So then all of these here will get a rank of 2 because they're all the same numbers, so they need the same rank. And then similarly here we've got 3 that are the same, so we add these ranks together. So this time we do 4 plus 5 plus 6 and divide by 3 because there's 3 of them. So all of these ones will get the rank of 5. And essentially if you, I think, oh in fact if there's 4 here, so we do 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 divided by 4, which gets you 8.5. Instead of calculating this, if you look at it, you're basically just having the middle of these. So if you think, if you've got three numbers, um, like this one, the middle one's 12. So all of these are going to be 12. On this one, because there's four of them, so the four numbers with three that are the same. The middle is this line, and the middle between eight and nine is 8.5. So you don't even really need to calculate them. It's just obvious that they're all going to be 8.5. And then five is just on its own, and six is on its own, so you don't need to do anything with those. So those there are the ranks for um, the data about how many months, I should say, uh, they've had social media for. And then you need to do the next one. So 
I don't know, it's, maybe this is months now, isn't it? So I just changed that in there. Uh, so then they've got the rating of the social media here. So I'll take that one. And we're doing the exact same thing. Now you don't get given these tables in the exam. You just have to kind of know that you've got to um, put them in order and then rank them. So that's kind of like the first step. So if we put these in order. Oh, I'm not doing this in class now. Okay. Oh, I've missed a two right, that's not good, is it? Good, and we've got four holes in the table there. Right, yeah. So then again, if you've got three that are the same, you add the ranks together and they're all going to be two because it's the middle number. Um, we've got four there, so it's going to be 5.5 because .5, it's in between that. And then we've got four threes, which is going to be 9.5 because it's in between that. And then four on its own, and then five, it's, they're all going to be 14 because that's the middle number between those. That's pretty straightforward, not needing to add the ranks together, you've got them all there. Now the next thing that you need to do is a little bit more complicated. So on this one, you need to put in the participants' ratings for the months that they've had the social media and then also the um, rating of the social media. So if you go right back up to the first one, we take the months one there. In fact, if I just copy them both over and then I'll just move the column along, stick that in there. That one is the data for this one. And then what you're doing is you're matching up the rating with what the rank was. So for the social media, if you go all the way back up, if it had um, a rating of one, the rank was a two. So for all the ones that are a one there, the rank needs to be a two. So we've got that there. Now when it was a 2, the rank was a 5. So you find all the 2s and you put a 5. And then the rank for 3 was 8.5. So next to all the 3s, you put 8.5. Like that. Go all the way back up and find the 4s. So before it was 12. So all the 4s will have 12 next to it. And then for 5, it was 14, and for 6, it was 15. So 5 is 14, and 6 is 15. Now you do the same for this one. So this one's got a rating of 1. So when the rating was 1, the rank was a 2. So all the ones that are a 1 have a 2 next to it. And then all the ratings of a 2 should have 5.5 5 next to it. So that one, that one, that one, and that one. And then the one that's a 3 is 9.5. So we put 9.5 next to all the 3s. And then the 4 was a 12, and the 5 was a 14. So we stick those in. So then that's that completed. So we've matched all the participant scores up with the ratings, not the ratings, sorry, the rankings that we gave them before. And then when you've done that, um, you need to find the difference between the ranks. So if we copy over this column and this column, and we stick them in here. Oh, it's not worked. Okay, let's just copy that column. So the ones about the months with the social media account, and then the ranks for the day. So you're not using the actual original scores, you're using the ranks. And then you are finding the difference. The difference means this one take away this one. So 2 minus 2 is 0. 8.5 take away 9.5 is minus 1. 5 take away 9.5 is to check <laughs> is minus 4.5. Um, and you just basically go through them all like that. Um, 
Oh wait, that's mine's not quite gone. This is why it's good to do it with the calculator because you might just make the odd error without you know meaning to. You know you're definitely right there. And I mean essentially it doesn't matter if they're a minus number or if they're um a positive number, like if you get that mixed up, because the next step is to square them and if you square a minus number you'll get a plus anyway so it shouldn't really matter that much if you get those mixed up so you could just really just do one take the other and instead of putting the minuses on just put the actual number on so you know you just ignore the minuses basically so you know the difference squared one squared is one uh, 4.5 squared is 20.2 is that all right? Yeah, it is. Six point five. Five is forty two point two five. Just roll that up. Um, zero squared is obviously zero. And um, minus six point five squared is one point two five. I can't believe I just tried to go for it there. Um, six point five. That is not right. 2.5 squared is 6.25. So if you get something random like that, you know that's not right because 6 times 6 is 36. Um, minus 3.5 squared. Oh, this is because I'm not pressing the cancel button. Um, minus 3.5 squared is 12.25. And then we've got 1 and 9, 0. And then and then 635 and then so okay so we've got the different squared knife there now what you do next is you total that column so when you add all these together um i wonder if i see i should have done this on excel because this would have been oh that was excel because this would have just been so much easier because I could have just copied this in and then I could have just sum the whole column and it would have told me what it was straight away. So really I should not because I, I could have done this with formulas and stuff and yeah but you don't have formulas in the exam so I'm sure you the wrong way around. So yeah so there's total um, of d squared so the difference of the rank squared is 129. Once you've got that you need to use this formula so the the sum of the d squared you've already found that's 129 and you've got to times that by six so in fact i might as well use this so this times by uh, six is 774 and then the next stage is to divide it by this bottom bit now n is the number of participants so in the one that we just looked at there was 15 participants. We go, you know, 15 participants there, 15 participants there, 15 participants there. So it's n is 15. So going back to this, if n is 15, then n squared minus 1 is going to be 15 squared, which is 225 minus 1, which is minus 226. And then you times it by 15, so you're going to end up with something like that, which is basically in this formula here. Um, in fact, that there is in the wrong place because it should be at the front there, like that. Get rid of that. I don't have to get right before I have 225 minus 1 is 224. Then times that by 15. Sorry, not with it at all. It's late. Uh, get you this bit here, and then you've got to do um, 774 divided by 300, 3, 360, okay, worse, um, which will get you this value here. And if we do 1 minus that value, this is what you'll get as your result. So this here is your Spearman's raw, which is basically your observed value. Now, if you remember with correlation coefficients, so this here is a correlation coefficient. And, oh, I held back a spell. Um, and basically, you've got here a plus on it. 
you're, you know, so if you're doing your calculator and you're doing 1 minus 0.23, it's a plus number, it's a positive number. Um, so you've got a positive correlation. It means that as one variable is increasing, so is the other one. So what this is showing here is that the longer that you've had your social media in months is going to affect how much you think it's an effective tool. So they're both increasing, not at the same rate, but they're both increasing. Um, also, it's 0.76, which on the calculator you just saw then rounds up to 0.77. Now, a correlation between, you know, the, the strongest one is 1, and moderate is 0.5. So you're looking at a strong correlation, really, um, between those variables. So, you know, they are showing kind of a positive, strong relationship between how long you've been a member of social media and how much you think that it's effective at connecting with friends. Now, in order to see whether it is significant, this correlation that you find, so you have found a correlation, it is strong, it is positive, but to see whether or not it's due to chance or whether it is an actual significant um, relationship, you need to look at the Spearman's Row table of critical values. So it looks like this. Now, this time, you are looking at the number of pairs. So the number of pairs you've got is basically the number of participants. So we have 15 in this um, example. And we always kind of use the p-value um, probability of it being due to chance at 0.05, so 5% chance of it being due to chance. Um, so our critical value is 0.521. Now, in order for the results in the Spearman's Row to be significant, the critical value has to be less than the observed value. So the observed value has to be bigger than the critical value. It's pretty that's quite similar to the chi squared. So the observed value has got to be bigger than the critical value. And in this case, 0 0.7 is bigger than 0 0.5. And so therefore it is actually a significant relationship between those two variables. And then that is how you do a Spearman's Raw calculation. I apologize deeply if I've confused you at any point. Um, but I did clarify any mistakes that I made, so hopefully you've not got lost and you've figured out what it is. Maybe play this again, maybe work with it. Um, you know, the example is in the booklet that you were given, um, and you can kind of, you know, put it on a computer like I've just done here, take bits out of it, um, and then try and see if you can do it. Though obviously there's another example in the workbook as well. So the other example is about um, psychologists observing a group of people negotiating the assault course. Um, they've got leadership and they've got sociability ranks. Um, the difference on that example is that they've already been ranked for you. So you can miss out that beginning step of putting them in order and putting the ranks on. Um, so you might want to just make your own data up. Um, you know, have a go if you can do a Spearman's role for that and then I can check it and see if you've done it right. Any questions, just let me know.